He's the ring bearer of the DC Multiverse line. Here's a look at the DC Multiverse DC Rebirth Kyle Rayner. Once a White Lantern and the bearer of seven rings, Kyle Rayner is back to basics under a new core as a Green Lantern. We need to get this review underway, and to get it underway, we're going to first figure out how tall Kyle Rayner stands. So, stopping the Ultra Megatron right there. The figure from the bottom to the very top, of course it's from the bottom, of course it's from the top. The figure stands 6.5 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 16, 16, 0.6 centimeters tall. To show you what he also looks like next to the Man of Steel, we'll put Kyle Rayner next to Superman. One thing that's to note about the Superman figure and Kyle Rayner is that they don't share the same body. Superman seems to still make use of the old tried and true traditional universe torso and utilizing some new lower leg articulation or new lower leg molding. It doesn't seem to be the exact same case as what we got with Kyle Rayner. It does look like the torso is the same, the legs are the same. But what's interesting about the figure, and I'm, I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, is I noticed that Kyle Rayner does have leg or foot articulation where you could actually swivel it back and forth. I thought to myself, wait a minute, humbled reviewer, did you actually miss that on Superman? We'll put Kyle Rayner down here for a second. And these figures are really at times difficult to stand. Uh, Superman doesn't have that. It doesn't seem like you can swivel back and forth. It's interesting though that he seems to use similar articulation here, but down here he's using still the basics when it comes to the multiverse or even like the universe feet. So even though they do look like almost from the waist down, there's the two side by side. Maybe Superman's legs, his thighs are a little bit more muscular but I certainly did think that they were the exact same legs. Find out later, you, know, you can't swivel the, the feet outward. You can't swivel them in the same way. At least not that I think. It looks like it wants the break and I don't wanna, I don't wanna twist it too much. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can actually turn it. Kyle Rayner, on the other hand, like I said, you can twist these all the way around. Unless Superman's, unless his feet, Superman's feet that is, are just really, really stiff and I can't actually twist the foot at all. But the figure gets a fair bit of accessories. Uh, they sort of tease you, unfortunately, with giving you the legs. Not teasing in the sense that they give you the legs, but they don't give you the upper, the well, the waist section. So even though we have this part done already for Superman, I can't plug this into place. I believe Batman Beyond comes with the lower waist and also the head. Well, I didn't want to do the head right away, give that away. So unfortunately, I'm kind of relegated to pursue this review with snapping nothing together for Lobo. Lobo just sort of has to stay in a limbo state of just his floating limbs. By the way, there's a close-up look at his legs. I love the skull detailing that they put on his knees. Also a couple of little stars there above. Still, again, I wish this guy was a little bit bigger. Um, you know, he is. he seems like he is going to be... I mean, even if you like look at the legs next to Kyle Rayner, it doesn't look like it's going to be that much bigger. Anyways, we'll just put those to the side and continue that part of the journey at a later date. Also comes included with an upgraded uh, new molded lantern. must say I do like the design of this quite a bit. It kind of beats the traditional, because I mean certainly collecting the multiverse slash universe slash superheroes. I've collected my fair share of what seem to be all the exact same uh, lanterns. Now this one is the Rebirth Rainer, so he's going to, of course, get an upgrade on his lantern. It looks like, looks like it's cast in all just green plastic with a little bit of yellow airbrushed. It looks like it's slightly airbrushed on the front and on the back. I don't know if it's supposed to have like a green outer ring to it or if it's just a, simply a case that they didn't paint enough of it on there. Maybe another coat of that yellow could have maybe popped that a little bit more. It didn't look like it was so faded. Now, it only fits, sadly, into one of his hands, and Kyle Rayner doesn't actually come with any other interchangeable hands, so he has one closed fist, of course, will sport the ring, and then the other hand will sort of be the giveaway, the dead giveaway, that uh, this will fit his lantern. Now, 
in order to get the lantern into his hand, the four fingers and the thumb are awfully closed shut. So you probably already saw it. I'll further add on to with narrative here. You have to kind of pry the fingers away from the hand to get him to properly hold the lantern in place. Um, doesn't sit the the f most firmest, tightest fit, I suppose. But, uh, you know, it certainly is not going to be falling out of his hand anytime soon. Uh, the other accessory he comes included with is like a little energy construct that can go over top of his ring just to simulate that he has some energy flowing and pumping out from that ring there, which there's a close-up look at the ring. Luckily, it's not just a blob of green paint. That would make me sad if that was just a just a big blob of green paint, but they have actually sculpted it in there until, of course, you hide it completely by taking this somewhat translucent, almost kind of snotty looking yellowish green. This is, if you are blowing your nose and this is coming out, that's usually a telltale sign of infection or possibly you're getting near the end of a cold cycle. You need to get into marketing, my friend. Yes, I've been told that frequently. Uh, it is a soft plastic, very, very pliable, and it just fits over top of his wrist like that. And it gives you a pretty neat looking effect. I would be a sucker, an absolute sucker, if I wasn't going to be displaying the figure with both these accessories. I think they look quite good in both of his hands, even though you can't switch them. Not that you would want to be switching that hand, you know, the lantern over there and vice versa. Well, you get what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and take these out of his hand. The schnatty mucus we'll just put over to the side. Oh, that's so gross. I know, it's, it's a little on the gross side. And uh, let's have a look at Rebirth, Kyle Rayner. Sort of, sort of sporting, if I will, the same similar outfit. I believe he had an outfit similar to this in the 90s. I wasn't certainly keen on the outfit then. I have, over the years, of course, warmed up to it. And I like that they've sort of, in the way, brought that back. At least it does look like it's a very similar looking design. Primarily all black, I have to admit. So really paint, they saved a fair bit on it. Um, well, I guess the arms are black, the legs are black. Judging by the way that they had to paint this section right here, maybe the torso wasn't black. Um, we'll of course look at the rest of the details in a second. I just wanna like focus some efforts, not the entire review, mind you, cause that would be excess. But I have to say, I really do like his head sculpt. Again, you either like this outfit or you don't like this outfit. Even if I was on the fence and maybe signed my name down on the category side that said, I don't like Kyle Rayner's outfit like this. I have to admit though, the figure looks good. Beautiful, well, beautiful. Let's just scratch that from the record. We don't want to use beautiful to describe a male figure, even though it is a neat looking design. You know the one thing I really like about this? He asks out to the audience. Somebody asked back, okay, thank you. One thing I do really like though, is that they've added a black, what seems to be a black outline around his teeth. Normally, this is, this is a detail that would be so quickly overlooked by Mattel when they produce figures like this. This just, this just alone makes the teeth and the mouth overall, gives it a sense of depth to it that normally you wouldn't see. At the very least, if there was ever a grimaced character, they would simply just paint white in there to fill in the teeth and call it a day. I don't know if it's just me who's seeing it, but there's definitely, it seems there's definitely a, a black outline kind of around the mouth area. Small, I know, I know that's, that's ridiculously small, but I, again, a, a part of this figure that I really do like. He's got some blue in his hair. I mean, it's not excessive. It's not to the point where I feel like I would have to go back in there with a marker and just kind of touch that up. A little bit of a curl naturally draping down the front of his mask. Yeah, I'm very happy with the head sculpt. Kind of also looks a little bit like Terry McGinnis, of course, with not that mask, but the mask was over top of it. As we move further down the figure, uh, pretty much making use of a mold that we're probably going to see a lot from some of the other figures in this wave. I think this is possibly the same body. Possibly. A lot of possibilities being thrown around there as the uh, Batman Beyond. It's a slightly more narrower uh, torso. I guess could not maybe have been accomplished for using with the new Superman. I mean, Kingdom Come Superman naturally has a bigger torso. There it is right there. 
Could it have pulled off with something like this? Possibly it could have. They just opted, I guess, to give him the traditional Superman torso. I mean, this is the same torso that it seems like every Superman has acquired every time he's been released to plastic. At the very least, Kyle Rayner gets his own mold, different from Superman, but of course reused later on for other figures. Uh, primarily, again, all black figure, but you've got the green in the boots. You've got these new green guarded gauntlets here that are on his, on his forearm, and he's got fingerless gloves. Everybody was wearing fingerless gloves. It's a Lonely Island song. Um, as for the rest of the paint, the only other paint that makes an appearance is right here. Now you've got like a half and half. When I see this, it always reminds me of classic Star Trek, the half black, half white aliens. Uh, can't help but notice though that this section here is not the not the brightest of white. It seems like it's almost like a creamy white or it's slightly a dirtier white. I don't know if it's supposed to be a brighter white than this, but it does seem like it, it, it does come across like it's a little on the dirty side. Paint for what little there is. I mean, it would be hard to pinpoint fault with a figure like this because most of it is all plastic. I guess the only problems I have with the figure is slightly broken up lines on the sides where this side's not so bad. This side right here, you can kind of see the black or maybe the lack of black. Maybe it's just the white that's doing it one color is creeping into the other and it doesn't seem like they painted it with a ruler like a straight sharp line would have gone a long way uh, even like the lines on the sides here little on the messy side i mean from a distance you're not certainly going to be looking at it and seeing the imperfections right there just feel the need to of course mention it for this particular review uh, he has the large feet not as problematic as Superman, probably primarily because I can rotate the feet back and forth. I still think, though, I'm just going to put the figure down here for a second. Yeah, the figures do have still a tough time to stand. I'm just going to go back to Superman. Because I, I certainly don't want to leave this off and then somebody say, well, my Superman was able to turn. Maybe it is. It does feel like there's resistance. Maybe I just have to loosen it up a little bit. The last thing I would certainly want to do is in front of the camera, <laughs> break it right off. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? But maybe there is posability in the feet. If there is, it's just, it's stuck on the Superman. And again, I'm not going to force it if, if I have to. You know, as that we segue ourselves then to posability, it would be a best, best time to look at the posability on this guy, which would pretty much be the same as Superman. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down a little bit higher actually than what Superman was able to accomplish. His arms rotate all the way around. They hinge out also. Swivel at the waist, swivel at the waist, that's a waist. Swivel at the biceps, there we go, there we go, all the way around. Uh, single hinge on the elbow and a rotation in the, in the hands. Somebody will probably ask me, can you swivel at the forearm? No, unfortunately you can't. You can only swivel at the bicep. As we move further down, setting our sights on the torso here. The upper torso has a crunch and you can rotate the waist all the way around. The legs split, being that they do ball joints using them as opposed to those hinge joints that we had with the universe figures. A top swivel cut on the thigh, a double hinge on the knee, loving the double hinge. Uh, hinge up and down on the feet and now an introduction into something else that wasn't accomplishable with the Superman. You can also rotate the feet all the way around. Now this may cause loosage, making up words again, uh, when it comes to these figures down the road, because of course I've had many of the universe figures over the time, and uh, I find one thing that goes really loose on these figures is like knees and ankles. So far so good on Kyle Rayner, but time will certainly of course tell. Despite never really liking this costume design, it really screams a dated look for me. I actually quite like this figure. I like it even maybe a little bit more than the Superman. The head sculpt is good. It's not pretty. I said pretty. It's not a really a pretty head sculpt, but hopefully you know what I mean. There's not a whole lot of paint on Kyle Rayner, so pulling off an accomplished figure with no QC issues can be relatively easy when there's really not a lot of paint on this guy. Again, the design is jarring for people that are more traditional Green Lantern outfits, you know, the all green outfits, but it's definitely a different take on the character, and equally so, it's a different take when you have this particular figure along with the other Green Lantern core. Kyle Rayner, again, is a great looking pickup, 
He's got, of course, the lantern. He's got the energy construct that can fit over top of his hand. And he's got legs that currently can't plug into Lobo until we look at Batman Beyond, which we probably will. I think I might try to do him last just because I always like to add the head as the final component when I build these collect and connect pieces. Just gave it away. Uh, either way, though, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, most of the time you should be able to find them in local retail. But Canada kind of sucks. I have to. Canada's a good place and all, but when it comes to action figures, sometimes a little scarce is the best way to describe it. Um, you may be able to luckily find this guy in Target. Uh, we don't have Target here in Canada. Or, again, Walmart. Uh, just can't find it here in Canada, sadly. So I had to order these guys online and paid a little bit more on the converting, shipping, brokerage, and all that fun stuff. But, at the very least, we had a look at some cool new multiverse figure lines. And uh, whenever there's a new line of multiverse figures, you know I'm... I'm stoked to get on board and uh, have a look at those. It's just a matter of getting them in hand. Either way, though, today, like I said, we were having a look at the Lobo Collect and Connect Kyle Rayner. This was, by the way, the DC Rebirth Kyle Rayner. Want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Multiverse figure reviews? You bet your bottom dollar there's a playlist just for you. And stay tuned, because like I said, we're going to have a look at the other two figures, and then we're going to have a look at Lobo. Probably going to end up doing him in a separate review. So there's about three more reviews that if you waited and sort of Netflix binged watched all of these, just kind of wait till all the videos are posted and then you could just sit down with some popcorn or a bologna sandwich. I like to rock a bologna sandwich from time to time. You could watch all of these in a row. Either way, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys next time.